is and then going into the positive and we could still see you know our center point over here and then it, it uh, tailing off into the negative let's do another one here so this is the gdp per capita uh current dollars so we've got the gdp number so now we're looking at uh economic data and when you do that you got to think per capita per person kind of thing the gdp divided by the number of people and so now we've got something that is uh, skewed to the right again because we got the tail uh, over to the right so we took all of this data and you can see we sorted it by by the GDP per capita and from uh, 221 to to the 17 221 uh, we have the largest amount here and then and then as we get the GDP per capita going up, we have many fewer that are falling into those buckets. So most are falling into the bucket on, on the lower buckets. And then as we have the GDP per capita going up, we have fewer falling into those buckets with an outlier way out here with the GDP per capita at 221. 221 which is interesting you would think that would be a very uh well you know well off uh place <laughs> so we can actually check it out down here so if i scroll down it's saying uh, monaco in this data set all right let's go back up top and see what the next one looks like so now we've got uh activity per hour calories so uh calories and we have a lot of the 42 and the calories going up on a per hour. So if we look at this kind of medical data, then we can compile tons of data, right? The stepping data, the calories per hour, the calories per day uh, and, and whatnot. And then obviously we, can, we may want to start to compile the data. So this one uh, has a bunch of basically the outliers over here. So when we just simply plot this, uh, this information, We've got it then skewed to the right. Now notice that these outliers are forcing us possibly to have these buckets, you know, maybe out here. So maybe it would be more useful for us to trim off some of these buckets, and then we can then we can kind of zoom in on more of the of the data that's in in a relevant range. So and so those are some techniques we could do with the with the graph or uh, with Excel. And so let's see the next one. And so I have the name uh, and the total. Oh, I think <laughs> I think these are like Pokemon characters. Uh, uh, that it was that was a this was another kind of I thought it was a funny data set uh, from that was on the Coggle website or Kaggle. I'm not how you say I'm not sure how you say the website, but I think it was Pokemon characters. And I'm assuming this is like their power strength level, you know. So if we look if we look at all of the characters and I'm not I'm not that familiar with Pokemon but I think you know they fight each like they fight each other like a card game and then you have different power levels and who's going to win if the two were to fight each other or something like that and there's different categories of the power and whatnot so it gets kind of complicated but if you if you just plot uh their power levels you've got uh, the 180 to the to the 241 I, and I'm assuming this is low power. So these are the weak ones, 241 to 302, 302 to 363, 363 to 424, 424 to 485. And then pretty high power level. Most of them seem to be in this fairly high power level, which is kind of interesting. 485 to uh, 546. And then it drops out sharply, sharply for the more powerful ones 546 to 607 and then you've got the super powerful one over here which uh apparently is if i scroll all the way down you've got the meto moto moto me eu two me too as a two i i don't know i don't know who that is but that's you don't want to, if you're a pokemon my takeaway from this data is you don't want to mess with that one hopefully uh but in any case you can plot just about any set of data that's the point and and you can get a pictorial representation and get a better idea of possibly what's going on this might help you to determine how you play your play the pokemon